everybody and welcome back to the Leeds United Challenge. What is the Leeds United Challenge you may be asking if you didn't see the first video of the series. It's quite simple. Sir Green, a character from previous streams, much loved I would hasten to add. <laughs> yeah right. Has taken control of the virtual Leeds United and he's got a simple challenge. To finish higher in the league than the Leeds United team of real the real life Leeds United team, he's going to try to finish higher in the league or, as the case may be, last longer than the real life Leeds United manager Gary Monk. Because one of us may end up getting sacked before the season's out. I'd probably put money on it. So that is the challenge and to achieve that we're going to be playing game for game. Every game will be done live. Every time Leeds United play a game, we will play a game. They will play a game. We will, so we will be mirroring the, the 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 season, not in terms of fixtures because we're not got the same the, the same fixture list, but we will be playing round about the same time, if not on the same day. Every video, every game of the series will occur when a real life late, uh, Leeds game takes place. So that's how the season is going to run and the series itself. And we'll see and compare and contrast when things are done. Who did a better job, Gary Monk or Sir Green? So then, talking of Gary Monk, real life Leeds United news first. Things were looking rosy for a while. I say rosy, looking better than previous seasons. Stability, new manager, premiership manager, you know, has proven himself in this league, got Swansea up there, uh, brought in his backroom staff, and then started to get some signings, and things were looking good. Let's have a look at some of the signings he got. Matt Grimes, I think he's come on loan from Swansea, his former team. Central midfield, not looking too shabby. Another former player of his, Kyle Bartley, centre back, much needed position, leads lacking in central defence. So uh, bringing in 24 year old Kyle Bartley, and he's got the stats in the right places, not looking too bad. Blundering Robert Green. Let's hope that no balls fly through his legs at Leeds. F former England keeper, 12 of, of 12 caps, 35, coming in to replace Silvestri. Bringing in his experience. Could do a good job. He's 35, but well, he's a keeper. Keepers can perform. Just look at Buffon. I'm not calling him Buffon, of course, but we look at Buffon. Uh, a winger. Has been brought in. Hadi Sacco. He's come in from Sporting. Even on here, he's got some decent stats. The acceleration looking good. The pace is there. Dribbling not too bad. First touch. See and hope that he performs well in real life. And somebody that we've actually spent some money on. Kimar Roof. Leading scorer of League One of last season, formerly of Oxford, is coming in as our lead striker. And, well, not very good on here, but let's see how he performs in the real-life Leeds team and, of course, in the season. And hopefully he'll bang a few goals in and help us to progress higher up the table than we have been in the previous few seasons. It shouldn't be difficult, considering it's around about 15th place every damn time. So they were the signings, and they were all signed relatively in a short space of time. And things were looking good. Getting rid of the dead wood also. Belushi gone on loan somewhere. You know, Bianchi out, and, and Sloth gone. Things were looking promising. A change of the team. Strengthening positions that needed it, and getting rid of the dead wood. And then the bombshell hit, and Lewis Cook went to Bournemouth for six million. Possibly rising to ten putting a bit of a sour taste in some people's mouths. But there you go. Such is the nature of the big fish syndrome. It's Premier League football and higher wages. Uh, well, hard to resist, isn't it? So that's the real life of these news. Not too bad. And still, there could be some more signings in the works. We'll see what happens. But to obviously, poor old Monk. Not got a lot of cash to work with. But he's doing his best, I'm sure of it. Anyway, enough about the real life Leeds United. What about Sir Green's Leeds United? Working under the same or very similar financial constraints and working under the same virtual madman has to adopt a very similar strategy of bringing in maybe loanies and cheap freebies and low cost signings. So, first of all, we'll start with, before we start with who he signed, we'll start with his ideals, his philosophy, how he wants his team to play. And we'll see how it all fits together. So then, he likes to keep things simple. 
He likes things done his way, and uh, his way is going to be 442. Keep it simple, stupid. None of your four, three, one, bloody blah, your inside wing forward things up here, your attack midfielders, your bloody Christmas tree for me, all of that fancy stuff that football's turned into. Get forget about it. We're going back old school here, relatively speaking. Four, four, two. Four, four, two. In the Yorkshire accent. Get the job done. Limited defenders to get rid of the ball. No dilly dally. Full backs. Bona fide wingers. Playing as proper wiggers, no cutting inside and none of that crap. Just get the ball in and whip the ball in the box. Your classic pairing, your defensive minded central midfielder, and then your attack minded to complement it. The combination, the Keenan Scholes type affair, one more defensive, one more aggressive, the Vieira and the whoever he partnered, was it Perez or I don't know. But anyway, you get the idea. And then, of course, up front, the more deep lying forward, the support forward, providing the link between the midfield and the big tar target man up front or the poacher depending on who we play. That is the system. Simple. Keep it simple, stupid. We want structured, we want, you know, we want relatively simple stuff happening, no flair, no roaming, no expression from the players. We just want to keep it simple. So that's what he's going to achieve. He's got a more attack-minded formation, a bit of a standard formation, and a more defensive type formation. We'll go through those close to the time we start playing, but uh, it's, it's just the, the basics of it is 4-4-2, classic 4-4-2 almost in certain regards, and trying to keep things as simple as possible, adapting slightly to the opponent, of course. So how do our players and signings fit in? Well, the philosophy, that is the formation, but the, the type of players he wants to be to be on that pitch are players who are going to work for the team, players who are going to put their life on the line for the Leeds United badge, the high work rate, the high stamina, the high, uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the teamwork rating is going to be high, the determination is going to be there. None of these prima donnas, these overpaid namby-pamby types, the people with the fancy flicks but go flying to the floor when a fly hits them. The, he wants the old school people that get the job done. That crunch in the tackles. That aren't afraid to pull out. That are work horses. That are the type, they're the types of players he wants pulling on a Leeds United shirt under his watch. So, with that in mind, we'll start with the signings that we have thus far. We have... Brought in Alessandro Gambarini for a massive 89,000. He is 33 years old. They don't make defenders like they do in Italy, I hear. And therefore, we're going for some Italian defensive experience. Stamina's there. Teamwork, work rate, determination. Perfect for Sir Green. He loves it. And even though he is 33, his physical is not too shabby at all. They may start dropping off soon, but we're hoping and keeping our fingers crossed that he might just last a year. Because that's all we're after. <laughs> of course, good heading. Marking and tackling are there. A good, good addition to strengthen that centre defence position. Gamberini. We've got Pablo Grenache for 450,000. Yes, Pablo Granosh coming in as a striker. Now he is going to be that, that deep line striker that we talked about, the one, the link between the midfield and the target man. He is going to be picking that ball up. His passing's not too bad. His technique's not too bad. First touch, not too bad. Finishing, not too bad either. He's got those stats to be able to distribute the ball forward through that target man. Teamwork, work rate at 15, pretty decent. Stamina's there. Determination, 16. He's got the stats, the qualities that Sir Green is looking for. And he is another addition to the first team. Darnell Fisher is a backup player. He is a wing back, or well, full back rather, <clears throat> on the right side, providing cover when our first choice right back goes down or needs a rest. He's not too bad. Just providing cover. He's come on a loan signing from Celtic. No wages have been paid, so he's completely free. Free cover, free rotation. Not too bad at all. And we have one player soon to come. It's The, the contract has been signed. The paperwork has been dotted and I's T's crossed. We just had to do a bit of a budget manoeuvre, so we've delayed the signing slightly. But uh, coming in as a support striker, 
a support target man, a rotation uh, option, not the first choice target man. It's uh, Carlton Cole, ex-England international, seven caps. He's coming in as our reserve target man. Again, rotation, providing some support and cover when we need it with injuries strike us. He's got, again, the teamwork, the work rate, the stamina, the strength, the determination not too bad. He's got, the, he's got those qualities that Sir Green likes. A workhorse, no nonsense. Yeah, so he's not too bad at all. Balance, jumping reach and heading are all decent. F finishing could be a little bit better, but on the whole, a good bit of backup should our first choice target man go down in the battle. So they are the three slash four signings that we are looking for. And I'm also looking for two more. I was looking for a winger. Aaron Duran, I had in a pre, I had in Football Manager 2015. He proved to be pretty decent. He's got the stats in the right places. Nothing outstanding, but kind of just consistent. He was, uh, I had to cancel the signing because we didn't have enough money in the pot. Um, so that was a bit disappointing, but uh, let's we'll keep an eye on him if we get any more money somehow. And the one signing that we really want Sir Green has a particular position in mind that he wants to fill with a certain type of player. This play, this position here is currently set to deep lying playmaker for a particular player that we're going to play here, which I'll go through shortly. But uh, he wants the Roy Keane, the Gattuso. He wants that player that's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck and rag it about. Shout at the opposition, shout at his own players, get crunching in the tackles. No nonsense, Marshall of midfield. We had that in our sights with Carl Henry on uh, loan list from QPR. He's got the, the stats again. He's got that teamwork, that work rate, that stamina, that determination, leadership, good tackler and marker, aggression and bravery. He is that type of player that can take the game by the balls and ring it out when it's required. But uh, he didn't want to come. Very disappointing. Very disappointing indeed. He didn't want to come. I've tried twice to get him. QPR have accepted. It's him that doesn't want to come to Leeds. And if anybody has any ideas how we can sweet talk him to come for to work for Sir Green, I'd be grateful because he is exactly what we need in that central midfielder position. It fits right in with Sir Green's ideology. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have to look for somebody else. So the two positions that we are looking for... Working, of course, on the old shoestring budget, 274,000 left and only 8,000 left in the uh, wage budget, which means we're going to have to go for free signings or we're going to have to go for loan signings. But we're after a midfielder, a uh, winger rather, left or right, does not matter to me. And uh, typical crunching down, Roy Keane-esque, you know, central midfielder, a commander. So if anybody's got any ideas, feel free to uh, let me know. Anyway, that is the, the, the movements. That is the movement in terms of the players. And uh, in terms of the staff, not quite as important. We have gone for a new staff uh, completely clear out here. A couple of notable ones. Fabrizio Picaretta has come in as assistant. Josep Clotet has gone, gone out with, uh, gone out with uh, what's his face, Gary Monk, and he's brought in, Sir Green's brought in, an Italian, Fabrizio Picaretta. My management, good, working with youngsters, good judging of players, ability and potential, a good second in command, four star. It's, uh, it's fluent in, in, in Italian, no use to, to Sir Green. <laughs> but he speaks good English at least. But yeah. He is uh, a good second in command. Only 47. Hopefully they'll make a good pairing. I've uh, got uh, head of youth development in place now. Working with youngsters and good judging of player potential and ability. Bill Hendry. Another one we've brought in. But uh, the main signing. Got some new coaches. The main one being Danny Murphy. BBC pundit. Taking some time off punditry and coming in to work for Leeds United as their ball control coach. And he's not got too bad to stats. Three and a half star. There you go. So that's some of the notable signings on the backroom staff. And we'll finish up then with how the first team will look come the first whistle of the season. Silvestri is going to be in goals. Berardi is going to be on the right. Charlie Taylor is going to be on the left. Saul Bamba is going to be in central defence with his new partner Gambarini. 
So far on the right wing we have Dallas, and on the left we're going to be playing Mowat, who's not really naturally positioned there, but we can kind of shoehorn him in, train him up as the season progresses and hope he can mould himself there. But ideally, as I said, looking for a, a, a winger, a bona fide winger to come into the team. The advanced playmaker, the more attack-minded, aggressive, the, the more attack-minded, sorry, central midfielder is going to be Lewis Cook, and at the moment, the deep lying is going to be Luke Murphy. But ideally, we want a ball-winning, as I've explained, a bit of a cruncher. And then up front, our target man is going to be Chris Wood, with Carlton Cole as his second, and then the deep lying forward or defensive forward, depending who plays, is either going to be. It's going to be Kronosh as a first instance, as the first choice, but all as, as backup we also have Dukara who can play as defensive forward as well. But uh, Kronosh is the first choice. So this pretty much is how the team is going to line up on the first game of the season. Unless we get a new player there, and a new player there or there. Confident? Eh, sort of. Confident that we can finish hiding the real knife Leeds United team? A bit more so. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. In my forums, there is a specific forum for this series. And in the description of this video, there is a link to a couple of threads. The first one is a tactics and training thread. Should you want to give me some tactical feedback advice, training advice, etc. You can leave your comments in there if you want. And the second thread I will be creating will be the um, the signings thread, the, the transfers and players to watch out for and players I might want to consider signing before the pre-season is done. Leave those in that particular thread. Um, so there we go. This um, The next video will be in two weeks' time, roundabout, there or thereabouts, where I will give you an update as to the final touches of our pre-season, including the friendly results, and then... The fourth video of the series will be our first game away to Norwich. And let's see how our determined, high stamina, good teamwork and work rate team playing the old 4-4-2 get on. Until then, see you soon.